My drive to work requires that I take the highway from our town into a larger one, and I'm not the only person making that morning commute. The quiet country road where we live gives way to a packed freeway with all of us heading the same direction. I sometimes look out the window at all those cars and think about how every one of them represents an actual person. A person with their own life, their own family, their own job and bank account and failures and dreams. Every day, all these disconnected lives sitting on the same road, heading the same direction, each a whole universe in themselves. You think about it too long and you can start to feel pretty small, even insignificant. They say the world's population is now close to 8 billion people, each with their own lives and families and work. Yet we believe that when we bow our heads and pray, God listens to even the smallest and faintest of these one out of 8 billion prayers. What is one life, one prayer? In the midst of all this, is the God who is larger than the whole universe really aware of me? We left off with Israel finally having arrived in the Promised Land, but things weren't going exactly as they had expected. Israel had not followed God's lead and had instead settled only a portion of the land. After years of wandering, this fraction of God's promise seemed good enough. The consequences were an existence far short of what God had intended. Israel was constantly attacked and outnumbered by their neighbors, never able to find the rest they had anticipated. One story tells us about the raids of the Midianites. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. It's in the middle of this chaos, Israel's daily desperation to survive, that we're introduced to a single man named Gideon. It doesn't take long for us to realize that Gideon is not a major player in the moving parts of this ancient world. In fact, Gideon was found processing a handful of wheat in the pit of a wine press alone. Now, in the ancient world, grain was usually processed on the tops of hills, open places, allowing the chaff to blow away. But Gideon, terrified of being seen by the Midianites, does his work instead in a hole in the ground. A single Israelite hiding in a hole. A man just trying to survive his routines. Just one man. But suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel's words are hard to believe. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Mighty hero, hiding in a hole, clutching no sword or spear, but a handful of wheat. The angel went on, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Gideon understandably had his doubts. Surely God was looking for someone stronger, more skilled in battle, maybe with the financial means to actually raise an army, not Gideon. So as Gideon protested and worried, did God move on to someone more courageous, someone more willing? Had God made a mistake calling Gideon a mighty hero? Had Gideon's doubts proved God wrong? The Lord responded simply, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. God could see what Gideon couldn't. God hadn't selected him for his skills, his strength, or his influence. God had chosen Gideon precisely because Gideon was a man like all the others in Israel. And that is exactly who God calls. Not just celebrities or prodigies, men and women sitting in cubicles, school pickup lines, scraping out a living, keeping their heads down, trying to get by. To these, God appears and says, mighty hero. He can say it because he is with us. God doesn't wait for us to be somebody before he calls us. 
He calls us into who he is leading us to become. That process works because God meets us where we are. A student walking alone through the halls, a parent late night at a dining room table trying to sort out bills, jogging on the treadmill or hiding in some hole in the ground. It is into these places which God speaks, mighty warrior. Hear how God might be calling you. Listen.